I'm not one of of the bottle. I must. I think I'm a special one. I'm not feeling the pressure. No, you cannot put pressure on me. No chance. I prefer really not to um, not to speak. If I speak, I am in in big trouble. In big trouble. Jose Mourinho is truly one of a kind. Love him or hate him. The industry of European football is a better and more entertaining one with him in it. At the height of the Real Madrid-Barcelona rivalry in the early 2010s, we had Messi vs Ronaldo dominating headlines each week. We also had Pep vs Mourinho headlines dominating our feeds. The only difference between all of these 1v1 rivalries was that Mourinho pretty much won all of his battles by a landslide, even if his teams didn't always win their battles on the pitch. At the time, Pep Guardiola described Jose Mourinho as the king chief of the press room and that he could never compete with him on that playing field. Now this declaration came a week after Madrid beat Barcelona in the 2011 Copa del Rey final and just the other day he was at it again proving that it's not wise to pick a fight with him. Antonio Cassano, a former player turned pundit and also a man that is not the most family friendly nor likable guy had some harsh words for Jose. In relation to Madrid potentially needing a new coach in the summer he came out and said Madrid would never call Mourinho back because quote Mu doesn't give a shit about football. He doesn't like to work, he doesn't know how to communicate or speak. Ouch. Mourinho's response? In Madrid, he is remembered for his jacket. With Roma, he won a Super Cup without playing. In Inter, he didn't even win the Lombardi Cup. You know what I won with Inter, Real Madrid and Rome. He will have a problem with me. I won't with him. The jacket he was referring to? This one. To say a man is only remembered at a club for the jacket he was wearing when he signed for them is wild. Not too far from the truth though. I think Jose won that fight. Mourinho's ability to work the narrative and bend it in his favour is unparalleled in the game. But he does far more than just defend himself. His rants and unhinged comments are often weaponized as mind games against opposing managers. They motivate his players and protect them from scrutiny at times by deflecting attention away from them. They do inspire hatred just as often though. In this video I wanted to go over some of his more raucous remarks and contextualize what they meant in the bigger picture. So with that being said, why should you never mess with Jose Mourinho? Yo, what's going on everyone? Really hope you're all doing well. Mourinho is a polarizing figure. There is strong reason to believe that Mourinho and Guardiola haven't shared the warmest relationship over the years. Despite once working together at Barcelona many many moons ago, in public at the very least, aggressive sentiments between the two have reigned supreme for over a decade. One of the most aggressive of which apparently came in 2014. At a UEFA coaches summit that year, the two apparently got into a fight over the length of grass. Pep said it should be shorter than regulation said it should be, Mourinho disagreed and eventually the argument descended into Mourinho accusing Pep of being a killjoy. If you enjoy what you're doing, you don't lose hair. He is bold. Guardiola doesn't enjoy football. Contrary to popular belief, despite the fact that this quote has been very widely shared over the years, I'm not entirely sure that it's real. Now the coaches summit did happen, but the quote? Every source on the web points towards an El Confidencial article and nowhere else. I'm not super convinced. But if true, would you be surprised? I mean, it sounds like the kind of thing this guy would say, right? At the start of the vid, I talked about Guardiola praising Mourinho's press skills. Guardiola was responding to Mourinho's claims that he only complains when the referee gets decisions right. Pedro had a goal correctly disallowed in that Copa del Rey final for offsides. He complained. Yet he didn't complain when the referee got several decisions wrong when he faced Chelsea in the 08-09 UCL, nor when Thiago Mata was very harshly sent off against Inter in 09-10. Mourinho was the former and current coach of those teams respectively. Pep was rattled. Uncharacteristically, he lashed out in the media giving us these quotes. For Mourinho, it seemed like all was going according to plan. The very next day, the teams were again set to face one another, this time in the Champions League semi-final. As the man himself once put it, Everything I say is mind games, everything I do is mind games. The only thing that is not mind games is the results. However, Barcelona beat Real Madrid and went on to win the Champions League and La Liga that year. The mind games weren't all too effective in derailing his opponent's focus that time around. 
but you can see the general idea he was going for, although they worked out for him almost every time he went up against Arsene Wenger. The feud between Wenger and Mourinho in the media ran pretty deep on and off the pitch. Arsenal and Chelsea were very much the top dogs in the league in 2004 and 2005. In reality, Mourinho and Roman Abramovich's fortune basically swooped in and snatched their title from the Gunners. In 05-06, after Wenger spoke light of some results that didn't go Chelsea's way, Jose referred to Wenger as a voyeur that likes to watch other people instead of focusing on themselves. There are some guys who, when they are at home, they have a big telescope to see what happens in other families. Fast forward to some eight years later in 2014 and while Jose Mourinho had been all the way around the world and back, Arsene Wenger was still there and according to Jose Mourinho at the very least, it was as if nothing had changed at all. You know, yeah. he is a specialist in failure. Eight years without a, a piece of silverware, that's failure. Chelsea battered Arsenal 6-0 at the bridge one month later in the ultimate humiliation. And this was peak Arsenal banter era too, so it was a deep cut. And to make matters worse, this defeat came on Arsene Wenger's 1000th game in charge. Way to crash the party. Later that same year, Arsenal were again beaten by two goals to nil, a game overshadowed by Wenger shoving Mourinho in the technical area, one of the most iconic moments in Premier League history. Rafael Benitez and Mourinho are also no strangers to a public feud. The latter pretty much took the opportunity to remind his adversary of how many Premier Leagues he won with Liverpool once or twice over the years. But this feud transcended far beyond England. In 2015, Benitez's wife stated that her husband was often brought in to fix the messes that Mourinho leaves at clubs. She was referring to Inter, Chelsea and then Real Madrid. But this was a very odd thing to say because while Benitez did win Europa with Chelsea some six years after Mourinho left the club, the only team that he came into directly after Mourinho was Inter Milan. He was sacked as the Inter manager only six months into his two-year deal. Mourinho had just won the treble with them and only left because the pull of Real Madrid was too strong. In other words, Inter were technically the best team in the world when Benitez took over. Not that much of a mess. In any case, the special one's response to Benitez's wife? If she takes care of her husband's diet, she will have less time to speak about me. When put up against Conte while he was managing Manchester United, there was always going to be beef. Not just because the two are fiery personalities, but also because Conte took over at Chelsea shortly after Mourinho was sacked by them during a season to forget. Chelsea beat United 4-0 in their first clash, and Mourinho wasn't happy with how Conte celebrated with the crowd. Two years later, after making new comments about Conte's crazy celebrations, the Italian labelled Mourinho as senile for not remembering some of his more over-the-top celebrations. In retaliation, he acknowledged that he's made mistakes in the past. But he also said, What never happened to me and will never happen is to be suspended for match fixing. He was of course referring to a major scandal in Italian football where Conte was suspended after being accused of being involved in a match fixing attempt with Serie B side Siena, his former club. As we can see, this dude really isn't afraid to choose the nuclear option. There have been many many more verbal spats that Mourinho has been involved in over the years but almost unanimously, he's come out on top. And going even further beyond that, in many of these cases, apologies have been made and truces have been called. Which makes sense. I don't think you get very far in this industry without understanding the game outside of the game. It's not important how we play. If you have a Ferrari and I have a small car, to beat you in a race, I have to break your wheel or put sugar in your tank. This guy understands the game. Probably better than most if we're all being honest. This quote doesn't exactly scream sportsmanship, but it's hard to argue with the results. He said this quote while he was the Inter manager, and those two seasons of his career were arguably his most successful. Two Scudettos, one Supercoppa, one Coppa Italia, and a Champions League. Not bad. Over the man's career, he's won two Champions Leagues, two Europa Leagues, a Conference League, as well as the Domestic League in four countries. Whatever he's doing, 
he's getting the job done. As we can see, this man is not one to back down from a fight, but his words are not limited to coaches and pundits alone. This happens behind closed doors with his players too. John Terry is one of the many that have come out and stated their admiration for the psychological work that Mourinho put in to get the best out of him. In 2020, years after his retirement, Terry once spoke of a time in Mourinho's second stint at Chelsea where him and Gary Cahill kept losing the ball in training and were just sloppy in general. You two. I'll go and spend 100 million on a couple of centre backs if you keep giving the ball away. The result was that the playing intensity skyrocketed and was followed by smiles and laughter. Then he spoke of other times where Mourinho would text him encouragement on how happy he was to have a captain like him and then basically air him the next day in training like they never knew each other. And then he'd be all buddy buddy again when the day was done. Of course all of this was intentional, I mean it's not like he's gonna let anyone get too comfortable in his teams. And players often can't thank him enough for what he does, many of them have confessed to being willing to die for him on the pitch. When it comes to Chelsea, John Terry is nowhere near the only example of a player that's been left bewildered by Mourinho's words or has found profound value in the ultimate payoff of what he was trying to achieve. Sometimes, oftentimes, both. He cares about his guys and their personal lives, going the extra mile that most coaches don't dare to care about. Michael Essien takes every chance he can to heap praise on his style of management and how he made him feel comfortable in England. He even followed him later to Real Madrid. Mourinho even refers to himself as Essien's white daddy. He was not my player, he is my son. I'm his white daddy. Zlatan Ibrahimovic was with Mourinho in Inter Milan and then later followed him to Manchester United. Nemanja Matic was coached by him at Chelsea, followed him to Man United and then followed him again to Roma. Probably the best visual example of the impact that this guy has on his teams is this scene directly after Inter Milan won the 2010 UEFA Champions League final. The team has just learned that Mourinho is leaving and former Inter defender Marco Materazzi is pictured crying by the team bus. Mourinho pulls over and the two embrace before leaving in tears. It doesn't always work out though, just as many players don't care for his methods or persona as those that do. Paul Pogba at Manchester United, who he apparently referred to as a virus, Deli Ali at Tottenham Hotspur, a whole host of Real Madrid players, of course including Iker Casillas, who Mourinho believed was leaking sensitive info to his journalist girlfriend. The list goes on. Evidently, results can vary. It is like having a blanket that is too small for the bed. You pull the blanket up to keep your chest warm and your feet stick out. I cannot buy a bigger blanket because the supermarket is closed, but I am content because the blanket is cashmere. It is no ordinary blanket. In the midst of an injury crisis in early 2007, he said that. Now, despite being in a tight spot, this particular line came in the midst of a very good run of form for Chelsea. Now, this is just one example of him backing his plays in the press. But while this strange extract came after a set of positive results, his more memorable remarks, more often than not, come after negative ones. Do you know what was the result? 3-0. It also means three premierships. And I won more premierships alone than the other 19 managers together. A legendary presser, one which we still talk about to this very day, but was huge when it happened back in 2018. Respect. Respect. And because of that, the fact that United had just lost their second game in a row, only three games into the season, became less of a talking point than it should have been. The subsequent narratives, headlines and lines of questioning were more about Mourinho than anything else. I mean, yeah, the players received their fair share of flack as they very much deserved to receive, but they didn't receive nearly as much as they would have had Mourinho not made the conscious decision to make himself out to be the villain. It was a very good distraction. He knows he can take the criticism. It seems near impossible to get under this guy's skin. After his very first league match with Madrid against Mallorca, he said, look, I'm the coach. I'm not Harry Potter. He is magical, but in reality, there is no magic. Magic is fiction and football is real. An incredible quote, truly magical. Yet again, while we all marveled at the ridiculousness that is Jose Mourinho and all said, oh man, only Mourinho would say something like that, 
The fact that his team played out to a nil-nil draw was a secondary headline. I think they maybe saved a slot for it in the back pages. As we can see from this video, there are very many examples of this guy very subtly manipulating public opinion, feuding with managers, and creatively engaging with his players. Ultimately, Mourinho knows exactly what he's doing when he enters a press room. He knows negativity sells far more than anything else. When addressing his players, he knows how to light a fire beneath them. And typically, the ones that don't succumb to the burn become lieutenants and have their games transformed. It's what he does. He has his flaws and he's not always successful, but it can be argued that nobody has ever done what he does better. The man dubbed himself as the special one almost 20 years ago. There's a reason why that name has stuck. And as for the rest of this video, I have nothing, nothing to say. <laughs>